A historic laboratory turned museum in Saranac Lake, New York, where Dr. Edward Livingston Trudeau conducted his groundbreaking research, is in the midst of a multi-million dollar expansion. Amy Catania is the executive director of Historic Saranac Lake and joins us this week to talk about the work underway to expand the Historic Saranac Lake Museum. Welcome back. It's nice to see you. Thank you, Tom. Nice to be here. You folks held a groundbreaking ceremony last summer outside the building at the corner of Main and Church Streets in the village. Dr. Trudeau's former home and office that you're now turning into an expanded museum? That's right, so we're next door. We're at the Saranac Laboratory that was built the same year as Dr. Trudeau's home and medical office. Um, they were, both buildings were on the same deed for many years, um, and it's really the sister building to our laboratory. Um, so we've been operating the laboratory museum since 2010, um, and it's a beautiful little museum. I mean, we, we think it's a really special place. We don't have a lot of space to tell the many stories in Saranac Lake's history. Um, there is a lot of history uh, related to tuberculosis science and research and patient care, but there's a lot of other stories that happened before Trudeau and after Trudeau. When the Trudeau building came on the market, uh, for us it was just sort of a no-brainer to, to take the plunge, purchase the building, rehabilitate it for expansion of the museum. To preserve that piece of history, that was important. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, we just on our watch couldn't see uh, something happen to that building. Uh, there was some talk about it being torn down um, and that, you know, that just couldn't happen next door to us. So um, we very quickly made the decision, the board really looked at it and we said, you know, we just have to save this building. And, and then we saw, you know, all the opportunities for more exhibits, for um, better collection storage, for a research room so people can access our collection. Um, it's right across the street from the Saranac Lake Free Library, which has a wonderful collection as well. So there's opportunities to partner the two collections together. So um, yeah, for us, it was a, a, you know, a great decision and we really never looked back. What are some of your plans for, for the new museum? Yeah, so um, you know the construction will be complete at the end of this year. Um, so we're really excited about that and we want to show off the beautiful new old building. Um, it, it'll have a new elevator, um, new collection storage, um, and it'll, it really is kind of back to being the home that it was during Do Dr. Trudeau's la lifetime. Um, you know, for over 100 years it was medical offices, so it's, it's really uh, been brought back to the time uh, when it was, uh, you know, about 100 years ago. Um, and we're doing all the work to plan the new exhibits, which will really um, tell a broader story of the Saranac Lake region. So um, one of the parts we're really excited about is um, introducing people to the history of indigenous people in the region. Um, you know, for thousands of years, indigenous people called this area homeland all the way up to the present day. So uh, we're working with um, our friend Dave Fadden at the Six Nations Iroquois Cultural Center um, as he's consulting with us and, and helping design the exhibits for an area of the building that will introduce people to that topic. Exciting for him as well because they're also undergoing an expansion and so it's an opportunity to, um, I think, really um, help publicize their wonderful project as well. You mentioned for the project you're about 60% uh, of the way there. Yeah, 60% and they're moving really fast. So now that the summer's here with us, um, all the exterior work will be underway this summer. Uh, the building, a lot of people ask me every day, uh, what's happening with the siding? Is it always going to be that baby blue vinyl siding? No, <laughs> that's going away. So um, that will be removed very soon from the building and we're, we're installing all new cedar siding and bringing it back to its original deep red color. So, so. it'll look like it did back in, yeah. in 1915. Yeah, yeah. And the fundraising, you've mentioned those efforts have been going well. You've raised millions of dollars. We have raised millions of dollars. Um, I keep checking the math to make sure we've got that right because it's been quite a lot that we've raised. Um, over five and a half million dollars. So um, the state of New York has been wonderfully supportive. Um, I think recognizing the importance of the project to the community, to the revitalization of the community. It's a downtown revitalization initiative project. Um, we, it has a New York Main Street grant, uh, historic preservation grant, um, some federal funding. So there's been a lot of grants that we've sort of cobbled together. And we've raised about $2 million in private support. So. And the fundraising will continue. Yes, yeah, so uh, we're in the next phase now. We're raising another $3 million, um, and that is for the museum exhibits. 
um, a capital project at the laboratory to make it handicap accessible, and also some funds for the endowment for the long term. So that's phase two, the work on, on the on the laboratory museum. Yes, that's another capital phase that we're, we're working on. And uh, tell us a little bit about the laboratory museum. That started the era of patient care and scientific research in the tuberculosis back in the 1870s. And that continued right through the the 1950s when the antibiotic treatment became available. Yep, that's right. So our building was, uh, the Sar Saranac Laboratory was actually ap operating up until 1964 um, when the new Trudeau Institute um, opened. And um, it was um, an active laboratory studying tuberculosis, but also other um, industrial related disease like asbestosis, mesothelioma. So um, a lot of really interesting research that happened in the laboratory. It's a beautiful old building, um, a very early um, example of a science laboratory in the United States. So the building itself, we like to say, is, is really our most important artifact. Um, and we tell you know the story of Trudeau, tuberculosis, um, uh, the scientific research that happened, but also we have changing exhibits in the lab. So um, this summer we just opened a new exhibit called North Country Neighbors, and it's featuring um, people from the Saranac Lake and the hamlets around us that are people who are involved in sort of traditional creative work in the area. So that's been a really fun exhibit because it's been a way to meet new people and kind of honor the, the neighbors that, that are involved in really uh, important work in the communities. And this is your hope, that with the additional space, you'll be able to have more exhibits like this. Uh, your, your space is confined as it is yeah. now at the Laboratory Museum, but you'll be able to have more exhibits like this. To really include the whole community, um, tell the stories that are important to the whole community, and you know, interactive exhibits that are you know fun and engaging for kids and people from all walks of life. So that's you know the the new space really gives us the chance to do that. You have a special summer festival coming up in just a few weeks, honoring the former president of the Philippines who came to Saranac Lake 80 years ago seeking treatment. Uh, tell us more about what events and special attractions you, you have planned. Yeah, thank you. Well, so we're very excited about the event on August 3rd. Um, it's uh, an example, I think, of so many ways that Saranac Lake's history connected our community to the world. You know, there were tens of thousands of people from all around the world that came to Saranac Lake for TB treatment. Um, and those stories are just, um, you know, fascinating, but they continue to connect us to people today that I think are really enriching for all of us. So the story of Manuel Quezon, we've known about it for a long time. We um, haven't talked a lot about it because there, there haven't been really, uh, we don't have an artifact in our collection that connects to the story. Um, but about five years ago, a, a group of local um, Filipino Americans showed up on our front steps of the museum with a big Filipino flag. So this group of people were commemorating the 75th anniversary of his death. And for us, it was really a wake up call that, you know, this is important history and we wanted to be involved the next time. So we've been working, um, planning for this event, reaching out to people from New York City, Montreal, uh, Albany. There are these incredibly vibrant uh, Filipino American communities in our state and beyond. Um, and so we're really excited to, um, commemorate this story and, uh, you know, I think build bridges um, across cultures through our local history. And President Quezon came here in 1943 and, w and was treated and then passed away in, in, in August of 1944. So this uh, commemorates the 80th anniversary of, of, of his passing. Yes, you know, for the August 3rd event, we have an opening ceremony. Um, the Consul General from New York and the Deputy Consul General will be in attendance. Um, uh, several different dance groups, um, some food trucks and music. So I think it's gonna be a, a really special day and special exhibits at the laboratory that um, present some of this new information that we've uncovered about uh, Quezon's time here. That's coming up on Saturday, August 3rd. Yeah. For a schedule of events, and if folks want to learn more information, they can go right to your website and, and uh, find out about it. That's right. That event and many others this summer, they're, they're all right there on our website. Amy Cantania, thank you very much. Thank you, for being Tom. With us. We appreciate it.